All right, guys, we'll go ahead and get started here. Um, we'll have people join as we continue. First off, my name is Lee Summerhalder at TechStream Solutions. Um, we'll be uh, going over um, the anatomy of Oracle imaging and invoice process automation. Uh, first off, thank you for your time. I realize everybody's busy. Uh, we wouldn't do this if we didn't think it was incredibly, incredibly valuable. This, um, this presentation will be recorded and distributed afterwards to people who have registered. If you have not registered, make sure you pawn at info at techstream.com. That's info at techstream.com to ensure that you receive the recording. Um, as a brief introduction, I'd like to um, introduce Carl Dion, who has 30 years of experience in the imaging field and will continue to uh, drive this presentation. Um, Carl is beyond an expert in the field. Um, with uh, experience in Oracle Web Center imaging product products, um, predecessors by Excel and Optica. Uh, he's worked with clients such as Alcoa, Elris, American Express, BJC, Clear Channel, Cousins Properties, Wendy's, Subaru, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, Greg Moeller will be technical support. Uh, he's an Oracle certified technical architect with expertise in Web Center, IPM, and UCM. A vast background in technical programming. Um, Greg would be available after this presentation to answer any technical questions. My name is Lee Summerhalder. I coordinated this webinar uh, based on the demand of our customers wanting to get a deeper dive into the platform to understand functionality, benefits, what it looks like in your environment and to kind of take a deep dive and answer any questions that you guys may have. So we will have a Q&A section at the end of this presentation. If anybody has questions in the meantime, there is a speech bubble on your Join Me dialog box that you can ask questions. Um, please direct those questions to the host, and we'll be aggregating those and answering them at the end of the session. Uh, we have muted you, but in case, um, please mute your phones and we will continue to, um, to do the recording and have that um, passed out to you guys at the end. So if um, we can move to the next slide, I'll uh, introduce TechStream and continue on. Hi guys, uh, Judd Robbins here, uh, EVP of Sales and Marketing. Uh, before we hop into um, uh, the actual presentation and demo, just want to take a couple minutes uh, to do the basic introduction of, of who we are, kind of where we came from, and, and why we're qualified to even give this type of information out. Uh, at a high level, uh, TechStream is a web center only partner. So we only work with Oracle. We really only work with this specific suite of products. Um, and uh, we've been doing it for about 10 years or so. So the veterans, or for those on the phone that are familiar with this suite, it's the Plumtree BEA, Plumtree, or I'm sorry, Stella Veterans that have really been working with this product for a number of years. And of course, we've been doing this uh, for several deployments, so over 200 successful deployments, so we really know how to get this done uh, in a cost-effective way and um, with a high or with low risk um, and high success. Carl, next slide, please. The areas where we really service you guys, uh, we, we split up into four sections. So we're a full services shop, as I mentioned. Uh, we have uh, discovery and design um, exercises we call QuickStream, and of course full life cycle management, so from soup to nuts, functional and technical, uh, from design to, uh, to go live, we have the, uh, the staff to make your projects very successful. Uh, after your projects are live, we have the ability to train your folks so that you can take full ownership of the platform. We also have managed services to help you along the way, so you always kind of have a lifeline uh, with our projects. Uh, from a sourcing perspective, if, um, if you guys can't find people to, uh, to put on your projects full time, we'll find them for you and you can hire them uh, and, uh, to your IT staff. And of course, we're a uh, value um, reseller and happy to work with you and Oracle reps to make sure that you have the right mix of uh, software to begin with. Next slide, please. So today we'll be talking about specifically imaging. Um, but I want to make sure that everyone is aware of the full suite. So Web Center Suite is Oracle's user engagement platform. So think of it at, uh, at a high level as technologies that can easily, easily connect people with information. 
So uh, in your mind, uh, take examples like portals for uh, a corporate intranet or uh, a portal for a customer extranet or a partner extranet or an easy document management uh, system for, that puts your company into legal compliance or a dot-com site that increases customer loyalty. Those are the types of technologies that we're talking about when we talk about the user engagement platform. Uh, a couple points to remember. This, in, uh, this platform is integrated work together, whereas you see in the middle we're talking about image process management. It's built and designed to work with the records management, work with the document management, work with the other pieces of the user engagement center suite platform. Uh, the out-of-box integration uh, for those individuals that are Oracle ERP, so PeopleSoft, JDE, uh, EDS, and such, uh, there's integration points that come out of the box which uh, help you guys from the implementation perspective. And of course, these solutions are the only solutions fully supported by, by Oracle. And I'd be happy to uh, talk to you guys after the, uh, the presentation to go into any more of those, those points. So with, uh, with, with that said, I'll, I'll hand it over to Carl Dion to start uh, the presentation and the demo. Hello. Uh, as as Judd mentioned, the Web Center can address many, many business applications. The business application we're going to focus on today is invoice processing. And what we're going to show you is a solution that we provide to clients to streamline the invoice entry process, to get invoices from paper, emails, and other sources and get them processed and into, in this demonstration, into the EBS AP system so that they can be posted and paid by your accounts payable department. And it's designed to streamline that whole process and minimize the amount of handling you have to do to mail other kinds of invoices before it's in EBS and you can start doing the real business work. This diagram here represents sort of a high level of the solution. Uh, it's typically adjusted to meet specific clients' needs, but we've simplified it to say there's a, a mailroom swim lane, a mailroom set of processes, there's payables processes that have to happen, and then there are field or, or remote or departmental management type of people that have to deal with uh, certain types of invoice coding and approval. Um, the benefits of this solution are, are to reduce the costs that are associated with getting invoices uh, collected from your vendors getting them into the, the payment system. The, um, it, it allows things to happen faster, and it improves the visibility of the, uh, the, the finance level of the, the, your liability that exists uh, with, uh, with invoices. And then the, what I'm talking about there is in many clients, there are remote people or department people who receive invoices and they put them in their inbox for uh, the month until AP comes calling to say, please submit them for payment at the end of the month. This system allows you to get them into the ERP system earlier so you can accrue and have a better feeling for what your financial liabilities are right up front instead of waiting around and not knowing what's hidden on people's desks. And it improves uh, controls on payment processing. There's, there's just, this is just a small list of the benefits that the AP teams have, uh, clients have, have achieved with, with the solution. Some examples of clients who've uh, implemented the solution. Uh, there's a manufacturing company that uh, we and Oracle have implemented, and they get up. 80% of their invoices are captured by the solution, processed, and the only time a person sees them once they arrive at the, the mail room or once they come in through the email system is when they're already uploaded into EBS. There's no human interaction required at this client to get them into the system. Um, they can process them, they process them with better accuracy, less time, and it helps them uh, achieve their SOX compliance. 
uh, with tighter controls. And we can, as Judd has mentioned, it, 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 we'd be pleased to talk to you in more depth about who the client is and what the benefits are. Um, this, this, this information is just, I'm, I'm going over at a high level to give you a feel for the kind of benefits. There's an Aeronautical Education Institute that uh, got paid back in seven months. They're getting an excellent uh, uh, return on investment, $500,000 a year. They're safe invoices. Um, again, it's just examples of how clients have, have achieved benefits with the solution. Another company is a bulk construction material supplier. They've increased their productivity and they've uh, reduced the invoice processing cycle time from 20 days, 20 to 30 days, to three to five days. What what we provide as a solution is there's a series of Oracle software products that are involved, and we'll talk about those in a minute. Those software products can be all installed and they're sitting there on their appropriate processors but by themselves the software products don't do much has lots of bells and whistles and functionality but they don't do much until they're configured together into a solution for a specific business application and in this particular case we're going to we uh, configure all of that software to process invoices and, and what we have it's something that Oracle's provided us that we use to get get a implementation started it's called a financials image processing solution accelerator it's a series of pre configured accounts payable processes that address most of the primary processes that that accounts payable departments uh, need in order to get invoices captured, routed for coding and approval, dealing with exceptions, dealing with getting new suppliers set up, and then getting the subsequent invoice that's been coded, approved, validated up into EBS. Um, the solution helps uh, us get a solution implemented for you faster. Uh, we've done many of these, so it's, uh, you, you can have confidence that it's, you know, we're not starting from scratch and building a custom special solution from you, for you that might sort of go off the rails and not be what you were looking for or m may not give you the benefits that you were looking for. It also is, is set up in a way that we can easily extend it. We can easily, I'll use the word extend, Basically, what that is is we can specially configure it or sometimes, if necessary, customize it to meet your specific business needs uh, for your situation, which may be different than this, this generic customer, this, this generic customer this solution was built for. And, and it provides the lowest cost of end-to-end -end, uh, ownership for the full life cycle of the solution from the time you purchase the software, we do our quick stream design and discovery, we install, implement, you go live, and then we provide the managed solution uh, while Oracle provides the software support for the solution. So some of the highlights of the accelerator, I think I've covered some of these, is it's pre-configured to address the most common invoice processing requirements, lowers the implementation cost, accelerates the implementation from the time we show up to the time you go live, uh, allows us to help you uh, utilize best practices in the industry for, for, for these type of solutions. Uh, again, it can be easily extended and customized. We're complementing what goes on in EBS. We're integrating with EBS and using your EBS business rules and your EBS configuration. We're not duplicating that. Um, so that's that's kind of the highlights of what the accelerator is that gets you started in the solution. Now what I want to do is I want to walk through some of the features 
on some of the features of the system, and then I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how the system is used and how it works. The, the solution, uh, you, you will have Web Center imaging software from Oracle or Web Center capture software from Oracle. They will let you scan invoices uh, at a dedicated scanner here, or you can go up to a multifunction device, a multifunction uh, scanner copier in your, your facility or in a remote facility and scan invoices into the system, or you can import invoices from emails that have been submitted by vendors or emails that have been submitted by remote resources in your, your organization. And we can also import uh, faxes, although we haven't been doing a lot of that lately. The fax seems to be only for small vendors do we do most customers get faxes. Most of them are getting them by email uh, or by paper. There's a component of the solution called Web Center Forms Recognition. This is a, a technology that can read a form, identify it as an invoice, a, a, a HR document, or some other kind of a document. And in the case of, in this, this situation, we would be implementing it and, and training it to recognize and process invoices. It has been pre-configured to get you started. Uh, to process invoices, it does not use a, a uh, donal OCR type of approach where you have to look for an invoice number in a specific place or a PO number in a specific place or an amount in a specific place. It's, I don't remember what the right word is, it's kind of using some kind of artificial intelligence uh, to figure out where, based on all its previous training, where where it would find something called an invoice number or a PO number on, on the bulk of the invoices that, that you'll get. And it can also be trained by, by us or by you to better recognize uh, invoices and, and extract the information from an invoice uh, for your specific invoices. And what it does is it OCRs the information off of the invoice here and then it validates that information that it's OCR against your EBS supplier table and your PO table so that it's getting, it's, what it thinks it read, it's validating, is getting a much higher accuracy of the information before it's passed downstream into the solution. Once the information is captured and a user, if necessary, has validated any questionable information, like here in this little red, uh, this, this little cell that's highlighted, a field that's highlighted in red, what it will do is it will export the information to a workflow process. As it exports it, it will match against the PO and do the line pairing at the detail line level against the purchase order that is identified. And we're going to show a little bit more about this in the demo. Once it's in the system, in the workflow system, we validate the information against the Oracle, your Oracle business rules. And then we present uh, the, inf the invoices in electronic form, uh, sort of images of the invoice. You see an image down here in the lower right. We present images of those to users to verify uh, information that's been uploaded into EBS accurately or if it's been uploaded and there's been some kind of a question about how it got uploaded in the EBS system put it on hold it gives them an opportunity to electronically look at the image and make the corrections in EBS so you're using your normal EBS screen there's an out-of-the-box Oracle function called zoom that we plug into it allows you to click the zoom, say click a highlight process invoices, and you'll get a list of the invoices you need to work on that have been scanned and fit into the workflow system. You bring up a picture of it, you do the verification or correction, or you can key right from this picture if it was never not uploaded automatically. You can key from this picture on the right into EBS, 
and then it'll put a link under the paper clip. There's a paper clip that I can't you can't see here in my picture. There's a link on, under the paper clip that allows you later to go in and, and, and find the transaction, the invoice transaction in EBS. Click on the link in the paper clip and you'll see this image of the invoice that's filed away in the electronic repository. Uh, there's a whole series of easy to use tools that the system uses to display invoices, to display distribution line information, to display holds that are in EBS. Gives you a series of actions you can perform to process the invoice, provide some summary information about the invoice. Again, we'll show a little bit of a demonstration and I'll show you how these different components of the user interface are used. Many clients have a requirement where some clients have the requirement where Accounts Payable does the coding of the invoice. The account coding is added by Accounts Payable. They're knowledgeable about the account codes. They're very uh, familiar with EBS, used to using EBS, and they can uh, enter the invoice distribution information directly into EBS for a non-PO invoice. They can enter that directly into EBS through their normal invoice entry workbench. What, what some companies have, though, is a situation where department heads, managers, field personnel need to add the coding information. T today, the way you approach that is they get the invoice and they handwrite the account distribution information right on the invoice, then they send it to AP and AP keys it in. This solution allows you to operate in a shared service center environment where invoices would come in centrally, be, be captured, placed in the system, put into the workflow, and then uh, either manually or automatically routed out to coders and approvers to code and approve the invoice. What, what the solution provides is a way for a casual user, a department head that doesn't know how to use EBS, to go in, they will be presented a, a form that you see here. This form will be uh, in compliance or it will be integrated and configured to your exact uh, account coding segments in EBS. Um, they can either use this little alias thing if you've set up aliases in EBS. So it could say Carl's account codes and Carl's got code 1, 2, 3, 4 and I don't have to know the different numbers I have to type into these fields or I can type the numbers in the field. This form is connected in the background to EBS to make sure the information is valid and correct before when I enter it. It won't let me enter incorrect information. When I've added all the information, I click the Approve button, and that information is then automatically uploaded into EBS. And again, we'll sh show that in the demonstration. So I would be um, looking at the invoice and that coding information on the left. And it also provides tools for reporting. There's all kinds of tools we provide. Uh, that Oracle provides that we can configure for you to generate the different kinds of reports you need to manage the, the processing of invoices before they're inserted into EBS. At this point, I'd like to jump into a demonstration of how the system works. Um, to do that, I'm going to go back to my slide here, this overview slide. And we're going to start in the prep, sorting, and scanning process or the email import process. Here you would take all your invoices and put them in the throat of the scanner and scan them in, or you would be looking at invoices that have been imported automatically from email systems. And so I'll show a little bit of a demo of that. So I go in and I go into this product called Oracle Document Capture. I could either import, I could select that I want to scan different kinds of invoices using different different configurations that have been set up specifically for your, your operation. I could say I want to scan, I don't really have a scanner so I'm going to sort of fake it by importing some invoices. Those invoices will be scanned into the system. You then have an opportunity to look at the invoices that have been scanned 
I won't dwell on it, but this user interface allows me to uh, rotate pages. I can move pages around if they're out of order. I can add separator pages to identify the start and stop of multi-page invoices if this particular batch that might have been imported from an email uh, did not identify the beginning and end of an invoice. Um, there's a variety of things I can do. I can delete pages. Uh, I think I said you can reorder pages. There's a lot of things you can do with the technology here. I'm happy with that. I look at it. I'm happy with it. I say I want to commit it. And all it takes for you to scan or import invoices into the system. So we've captured the invoice. Now the invoice in the background, and I really can't show this because the system's chugging away in the background. What it's doing is it's OCRing information off the invoice. It's taking the OCR information. It's validating the supplier name. It'll read the name of the supplier and validates it against EBS. Identifies in EBS from the EBS system. It identifies what the supplier number is. It reads the supplier address. It identifies what the supplier site is. It's it's getting valid information packaged up to be passed downstream for automatic upload into EBS. There are situations where sometimes the automated system isn't quite confident that it read information correctly, wants to present it to a user, and that user can look at the information and make additional adjustments or corrections as necessary. The system comes with uh, it's presented a bunch of, I see here a bunch of batches that it's asking me to look at. It's telling me there's some invoices in this batch that have some information I need you, Mr. User, to look at. Um, if we look here at invoice two, you see the number two up here, invoice two, everything is green. The system said I read and I'm very confident that I read everything correctly off of this this invoice. Invoice three is the same way. But invoice one, it had a little red highlight around this field that's saying, I'm not sure about this vendor number. It's read some information off the invoice, this advanced data network devices, but it's not confident that it got it right. I can do things like try to find out where it's read a PO number. You'll see here down on the bottom, it's it's got a little snippet. It said, oh, I read the PO number. Yep, that's the right PO number. I've read the address. I guess the address is down below here somewhere. So it's read the address, but it's saying, wait a minute, the address that's in the system is different than this address here. I need you, Mr. User, to tell me would be a whole list here of the different sites that are associated with advanced data networks, and I get to pick which is the site out of this list. You can't see the list because my demo doesn't have a complete listing, but if there were five sites for advanced data networks, it would list all five of them here. The system's confused. It wasn't sure. It had a 37% confidence that it was this site, but that's not very high. So in that case, it gives you the opportunity to pick the one you want. Or in this case, I, I find that that vendor site is not set up. I'm going to say vendor site not found, tell the system that, and then I'm going to let the system continue processing this. What the system's now going to do is it's going to It's going to take the information out of this forms recognition software. It's going to file the images away in an electronic repository that you can, so you can be able to see them for, I would say forever, but is whatever your uh, retention plan says invoices needed to be saved for maybe seven years. They're, they're filed away electronically for seven years. I don't need the paper anymore. I don't need to copy the invoice stored away in some file share or anything like that. It takes the extracted data, the image, and it's going to insert it into a workflow. When it's inserted into the workflow, behind the scenes here, it's going to take all that data 
and it's going to validate it against your EBS business rules and make sure that the invoice can be uploaded based on the data that's been extracted. In some cases, it can't be directly uploaded with the information that's been extracted, so what the solution will do, the idea is that they would like you to minimize the amount of time you're fiddling around with a non-EBS user interface and user experience and focus your attention on what you're comfortable with, which is the EBS accounts payable invoice workbench. But they would like, what they've got the system set up to do is to take and apply default data, like a default supplier, a supplier that's not really a valid supplier, but it, it's just a, a supplier that'll allow the invoice to be uploaded, or a default account that allows the uh, invoice to be uploaded. It's an account that, that, that isn't really in anybody's budget. You, you can't complete the invoice until you transfer over the information out of that account to the uh, valid account but it gets the invoice into EBS. Once the invoice is in EBS, there's now the opportunity for accounts payable people to deal with exception invoices or to verify that an invoice that's been automatically uploaded is truly a valid invoice and should be uh, re uh, released for uh, posting and payment. But we'll jump back to the demonstration screen here. Go in, we'll close all this, and I'm going to, what I've done, just to save time on the login, is I've gone into EBS, I've gone into uh, payables, invoices, invoice entry, and invoices, and that brings me to this screen. At this time, I say, okay, what, what work do I have to do? What is the system telling me that I need to work on? I ask it to present that information to me. It asks me to sign in first thing in the morning. I wanted to do this after that. I log in, oops, it's telling me I did a bad thing. And I've got something you can't see, this little control for this thing is right there. Do that again. Let me just try that one more time. This, this is to prove to you it's a live demo. If it canned, it would have worked perfect. So what, what I've done is I said Zoom process invoices. I told EBS, hey, reach out to the web center solution and tell me what kind of invoices I have to process. In this situation, this is a list of, this, this is a set of cues, of, of uh, organized set of cues that we can configure for your for you that present information to the people who need to deal with it uh, based on your business requirements. In this case, uh, it's got a series of invoices. I see five invoices here that the system's automatically uploaded into EBS. You're going to see that in a second. And they're on what's called a verification hold. I click on this to view it. I see a picture of the invoice. I see some actions I can perform, and down here is telling me it's on an IPM verification hold. That to me means, and there's no other holds that means to me, and it'll mean to you when we educate you on how the solution works, it means, hey, invoice has been automatically uploaded. You need to look at this, Mr. User. If it's okay, we'll automatically release it for payment. So in order to make see what's going on, I take that information, I go into the normal find command, I find that invoice, see, yep, that's the invoice. If I look at the holds, it's been put on a, what's called an IPM verification hold, a web center imaging or the old acronym is IPM. It's put it on a hold. It's waiting for a user to verify that everything's okay. okay. Everything seems to be good. I'm very happy with that, so I simply say complete that invoice. 
what's going to happen is the system is going to go away and in the background it's automatically going to release the hold that you see here uh, just EBS takes a few minutes to go do that meanwhile I want to show you something else here as I mentioned it's put a link under the paper clip you'll see here a picture of the invoice that was added Automatic, the link was automatically added by the solution so that in the future anybody that wants to look at the picture of an auditor or somebody wants to see a picture of the invoice can do that simply by clicking the, 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 the paper clip for that particular invoice. Um, while we wait for this to do its thing and this is a live demo, so it's so EBS is thinking about releasing this hold. What it's going to do is it's going to be uh, tell the system, it's going to put a release in here and explain that IPM released the hold at some point in time. Uh, what what might also be occurring, and what also has of, of a have have occurred, is an invoice was automatically uploaded, but there was something wrong. There was an invalid PO number. You see here, and it's telling me there's an invalid PO number. If I was to go back to, yeah, we'll come back to the invoice. If I was to go find that invoice that's been uploaded into EBS and placed on that hold, not an EBS expert, so please, Please bear with me as I stumble and bumble through EBS. But we have the invoice has been uploaded. You'll see here it's placed on an invalid PO number hold. User can go in. The invoice number is 66691. 66691. And you see EBS is telling us down in the lower left that's an invalid PO number. So I have to find the correct PO number and enter that information in here. But as we said before, the invoice has already been uploaded. You don't have to do the manual entry at the header level. All these header fields here will be uh, entered by automatically by the system. The line level information that it, that it can uh, enter has already been entered. So it, it's improving your productivity by minimizing uh, the work you have to do to get the invoice uploaded. Let's go back and I'm we go too far away here. Back and see if I can find that other invoice that I uploaded. We hear that it is automatically released that original invoice I just did and this was now ready for posting and payment. I don't have to do anything more with that. And again, the link's under the paper clip, so if somebody downstream wants to see the image, they can see the image. That's a couple of examples of things that can go on in accounts payable. Uh, I'm going to come back to a accounts. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll show you a couple of other things that you could do with an invoice. I'm not going to dwell on them because the... I can go back later during the question period and show some of this, but let's say we have an invoice. I'll go back to my task list. Here we have an invoice that I, Carl, not quite sure how to process. You can configure the system to have multi levels of AP people. I can say, I want to add a comment to this one. I need help. And you can see here where it's added a comment. I then want to route it to a specialist. This is uh, no PO. I don't, I don't have a PO for this. Can I have some specialist help me look? If we look at specialist group then they you'll see the same invoice two zero zero that pops up 
and it says down here, need help. Now the specialist person can enter the PO, PO number should be one, two, three, four, five. They can provide information and then it can be routed back. Another thing you could do is it may be that, that uh, this is a bogus PO number for a supplier that's not set up yet. I can route uh, the invoice to a queue where a group of supplier maintenance people can pick up the invoice and they can process it. Or I might want to say, I'm going to route this invoice out to uh, Judd in the field because Judd, I don't know what you're doing, but you've got an invoice coming in from a vendor that, that, that we just don't know, never heard of this vendor. Can you please give, give us more information about it? So I can search for Judd's name, put Judd's name in here. I can ask, you see the comments on the left, I can ask him a question, I can route it out to him, and then it will automatically be routed back to me. The advantage of doing this is it avoids things getting outside the system and being routed through email. It doesn't have any automated follow-up mechanisms or anything. If I was to route this invoice to Judd using this request for information process, uh, after three days I could have the system send Judd an email and ping him that he needs to respond to me. Uh, I could have another email sent in another couple of days. If he still doesn't respond, I can have the invoice returned to me and I can escalate it to Judd's boss to get some attention paid to the invoice. That's a couple of things that I've shown you. A, I've shown you how to get started. I haven't shown you the completion, but basically, Judd would get a picture that looks just like this on the screen. He would enter his comments and he would say complete, and it would come back to me to continue working. We talked about a situation where your particular. Uh, Oops, only me, start over. Okay, it, it, there's a situation where <clears throat> uh, Lee is the person that needs to code and approve this invoice. So we will send Lee we, 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 in, this, in this other screen here. In this screen here, we'll say request approval. A quick request approval. Lee will get an email. The email will be a link. Lee will click on the email and he'll get this screen that pops up that says, Hey, Lee, you got a bunch of invoices you need to approve. If you go ahead and look at those invoices, Lee gets this screen. Lee says, Yeah, I don't know how to use EBS, but this screen probably is not that daunting. I'll go in here and these are uh, the account codes I have available to me. So I want to take this particular number here. I want to edit that line, that that field because you'll notice here the account field is blank. He goes in, he selects the appropriate account coding information for that field. He's using the aliases to keep it simple. He updates that. It says, okay, for this particular line item, that's the account code. For this line item down here, we need a different account code. It goes with a different part of my budget. I'm going to do that. Bottom of the screen, I happen to notice there's $49. It's out of balance by $49. It, it's got a balance before I can process it. So what, what I want to do is I'm going to find another account code. I want to find another account code. That's the appropriate account code. I want to add the $49. And Carl added this line during the demo. So I'm going to add that line. And you'll see here it's added that line for $49, and I goofed on my prior line. I better get that one set because it'll burp when it goes to EBS. I don't have the proper account code, account coding information in there for that $200 line. Everything now balances. I'm pretty happy. 
and I've jumped ahead of myself. One thing you're going to ask me is, how did you do the coding when you never saw the invoice? I should have opened the invoice here and then moved it to a new window, and I would have been on my, my laptop or my workstation, I would have seen the invoice, seen the coding form, done the coding. See how the invoice has been routed out to me. And again, if, if it was routed out to me and I uh, didn't pay attention to it for three or four or five days, whatever your business rules are, the system would have pinged me with an email to tell me to go back in and, 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 and says, you have an invoice that requires your attention. And it would have reminded me to go in and do this work. In this case, I've, I'm showing you both the accounts payable screen and my screen. I will have entered all that coding information. Everything's good. I say approve. And it's now going to upload the invoice into EBS for accounts payable to work on it and allow me to go in and look at another invoice and code another invoice. Um, back in the accounts payable world, what else I can show you? We talked about comments. You see we've added some comments here. We've added comments. Uh, we talked about the different views that we can configure. Invoice, the, the one I process is 003, so it's not here yet. I want it to get uploaded so I can show you that it was actually automatically uploaded into EBS. There is a queue for manual entry. If, if I was getting invoices in uh, something perhaps like a utility bill that's kind of messy with a ton of information and 50 pages um, because it has all kinds of information for different, different uh, meters, uh, those I might find in, in my particular business case, uh, they're better if we key them from image. Today you key them from paper. What you can do with this solution is you would uh, capture them and route them to a queue that would be called manual entry. We would skip that forms recognition piece and go right here to manual entry to manually enter them uh, in EBS. Uh, you'd have priority queues if, if you would like. Uh, I can save an invoice for to me while I'm asking a question from somebody before and 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 I would or I've started to process the invoice and I'm not complete, I want to save it to myself so nobody picks it up. Uh, I go to lunch, come back, and I can continue to process it. You'll see here that this invoice that we coded has now, see here, it's, there's the coding information. It has arrived in the queue for accounts payable. They say what I really need to do is they need to find that invoice in EBS. It's this invoice right here. I want to find that invoice in EBS. EBS is finicky about its tabs. I find the invoice. And now look at the lines, and it's we added the lines, and you'll see here on line number three, the $49 line, that the information I added in the coding form was automatically uploaded into EBS. One thing I forgot to mention somewhere along the line here is, for those of you who are technically inclined on the phone, the solution uses the out-of-the-box open interface table as its mechanism for uploading the invoice information into EBS. We capture, validate, confirm the information, place it in the open interface table, and then it's uploaded into EBS. And that's where this information is coming. We do provide out-of-the-box a series of holds, uh, IPM verification holds, IPM validation holds, that will be automatically uploaded by uh, the combination of your team and our team when we work together to implement the solution and integrate it with EBS. Uh, we call it the EBS plugin. 
There's the piece that we did earlier in the Zoom area, out of the box, Oracle's recommended integration technique for third-party products to, to uh, have information showing up on EBS screens. Is this Zoom and a thing called the custom PLL? Uh, we'll provide you all the code for that. Your people in the EBS world will compile it into this thing called the custom PLL and magically on the invoice processing workbench. This process invoices thing will show up, which will get you into uh, get the integration working between the user who's using EBS and the list of tasks that they need to perform. So I'm not sure I, I we could with we have some time here. I could take one of these ones that require validation. I can bring it up. I can add a note. I can say uh, I think I don't remember if it was Judd or if it was if it was Lee, but I could say Judd, who is this? Who is this vendor? Add in my comment. I want to route request information. I find Judd's name in the system. Judd's name is actually Web Center One for the demonstration. I find it. I'm sending this thing off to Judd. Judd's getting an email with the link in it. He clicks on the link in the email, gets the screen that pops up. He looks at this invoice and says, oh, I need to tell Judd who is this. And Judd responds with our new webinar vendor. Have that in the dictionary. So there's the comment that's been added. That says complete. That's all Judd has to do to get the information back to accounts payable so they know how to continue processing that invoice. Back in the accounts payable world, the invoice should show back up here momentarily. There it is. Accounts payable person goes in and they see that, oh, this is our new webinar vendor. Okay, I know who that is. Now I can find the task in EBS and complete the task in EBS, or if it wasn't able to be uploaded in EBS, I can key it from image from this picture of the image on the screen and get it into EBS. Got a very similar situation. Uh, you can do the same kind of a thing with one that requires supplier maintenance. If I, I could take that, I'll just work on that same one. I go in, I can't find it in EBS. I now have to say, Lee, get this vendor approved. Carl can't type. I tell Lee to do that. A supplier maintenance. No supplier. Send it off. Lee gets an email or Lee checks his queue. He goes into his queue, he sees that, oh, this vendor needs to be set up. So now Lee says, okay, I'm going to do my bit to go get the vendor's W-9. I'm going to take the end and get the form filled out for routing the, the, uh, the vendor approval information to get the vendor approved when the vendor's approved. Add the vendor to EBS, and then I say AP. Vendor is five four three two one. That's the vendor number. 
I say, okay, complete, and it's going to show back up in AP. AP can now go in. They have the vendor number, and they can either update the information in EBS if this has automatically been updated. It has been uploaded. It was uploaded with a no supplier code. They can go find this in EVS. Find it in EVS. And they're in EVS. They can look at the holes. Yep, no supplier. Now they can go in and do whatever, and now I'm a little bit out of my league. But they can go in and do whatever they do to get the supplier set up correctly here. You'll notice it's putting a supplier number of 16 over here. It's got a thing called IPM underscore site. When it automatically uploaded it, I mentioned earlier in the presentation that if it can't find information, it wants to get it in EBS to make your life easier so you're getting a, a common user experience, the one you're most commonly used to working with. What we'll do is we'll put information in there, uh, default information like IPM underscore site or IPM underscore the supplier name. Uh, to see the trading partner IPM validation. It, it's put in a default value that lets the, the the information get into the open interface table, allows the the open interface table to upload the invoice into EBS, and now it's in EBS where you can work with it and make the corrections you need to make. In this case, I would be going into here and I would be entering the number of the invoice so back over here. I see what's that vendor number, 54321. I would enter 54321 here and go find the vendor. Now, this invoice that's already in EBS be updated when it's all updated and I'm happy with it I'm simply going to say complete I'm done with that invoice in the, in my queue it'll do the release of the hold over here I didn't do the work so it's not going to do it but it would do the release of the hold and I say to the system what's the next task I need to work on brings up the next invoice and I continue the process So what, what we have done is we have gone through exceptions that the AP person would need to deal with, uh, verifications. Uh, those verifications, by the way, we can configure the system that once you're comfortable with the way the solution works, for those invoices that are below the threshold that your business rules allow, uh, pick a number of a hundred dollar invoice or a ten let's call it a ten dollar invoice you may not want a user spending time verifying a ten dollar invoice you're comfortable that the system has been performing for six months it's been processing invoices correctly every time I verify an invoice that's ten dollars or less it's correct I don't want to waste time verifying those we can configure the system to automatically release uh, insert and release invoices that are less than your threshold that way you don't have to play with them. Uh, we've, we've dealt with the supplier maintenance and we've dealt with the request for information situation. Down here, uh, we've dealt with the account coding solution or, or uh, a mechanism that we provide to allow your non-AP people to be more efficient uh, in, in coding invoices and for getting those invoices coded correctly and accurately before they're uploaded. That was the coding and approving demo. We did a supplier maintenance demo. We did a request for information demo. When all that's done, at the early part of the process, I did show you that invoice. Uh, the invoice, I believe that invoice was invoice number back here, go back here. I believe that invoice was invoice number one, and I didn't enter the information right. Invoice number one, where it automatically released the hold, 
everything once it's perfect and the hold is automatically released by the web center solution it's now ready for you to do your batch review your your batch register review and posting and payment processing in EBS and I did show you a link under the paperclip all invoices that are either automatically uploaded or keyed from image will have a link under the paperclip every invoice that's processed by our solution successfully into the accounts payable solution EBS will have a link under the paperclip so you can go in and you can view the invoice at any time um, at this point I'm pretty much talked out although I can during the question and answer period I go back and do some other demonstration things to answer questions if that's appropriate but at this point I believe Mr. Lee it's your turn Thank you, Carl. Um, <clears throat> so I wanted to, uh, again, thank everybody for showing up. Um, there's several ways to get a hold of TechStream. Um, most notably would just be the email info at TechStream.com that goes to our executives. You get a direct path into the experts. We can guide you to people uh, that can answer specific questions. Uh, if you want, <clears throat> this example that we just went over was uh, very EBS-centric, but it's uh, obviously a platform that can be used in a lot of different systems. How that system looks in your environment is dependent on your environment is set up like, and every situation is different. So uh, it's very important for us to communicate, understand what your goals are, and then get um, a brief understanding of what requirements would take, and that way we can get a realistic picture of, of if it's viable and what kind of ROI we can expect. Um, absolutely reach out to TechStream if <clears throat> you're running legacy platform. Um, if you want to hear about other imaging customers, we've got great case studies around how this works um, from some very high name brands. Um, and if you're interested in pursuing uh, the duration or level of effort to upgrade, we have some methodologies, one being QuickStream, which is a six-week requirements gathering process that leaves you with non throwaway deliverables and a roadmap to success for this platform. Um, our social channels are populated with copious amounts of content. Uh, you'll find the imaging data sheet on our LinkedIn page. Uh, feel free to follow us. We continue to post content and communicate and engage our customers and partners. Um, we're in business to help uh, enterprise business succeed. So if you have any questions, we're happy to get the experts on the phone to understand your challenge and provide you with a solution. Um, <clears throat> from here, I feel like um, visit our website, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook, uh, say hi, give me a call. Uh, whatever you do, just um, we'll be receptive to you and understand that uh, it's a process and we'll take the first step incrementally. So uh, I guess we take the next slide and open this up to um, questions. Let's see, do we have, and I'm going to unmute everybody. The conference is now in conversation mode. So I'm opening it up to the group. Does anybody have any specific questions? Going once, going twice. The softball questions? Football. Some Oracle, out, some Oracle guys out there. Atlanta Braves questions? <laughs> Uh, great. So um, we're, we're always open. Okay. okay, go ahead. Uh, this is Bradley New with Oracle. Um, in, in reference to, there's a lot of people out there that have a, I'm going to call it a little bit of an archaic imaging solution. Um, they may be running one of the popular scanners and some kind of OCR. There's a lot of niche vendors out there. Can you kind of give a high point of the differences between our solution and the run-of-the-mill archaic solutions that are typically being run out there. So Carl, I guess I could take the, the first part of that and then uh, you could call it around one. I, I guess Brad, the, uh, the first thing that we like to say is that, and this is a supported 
solution by Oracle. So if you're a company that has Oracle infrastructure, uh, Fusion middleware, or one of the Oracle ERPs, this is really the only choice uh, that you have as far as when you upgrade to, say, R12 and EDS or in future versions. Um, so this is really the only one that's, that's flagged and supported by Oracle. Um, the other, other ones out there are uh, things you need to be careful of. Um, people that do OCR, so a lot of the, the providers out there will say, yeah, we got this great uh, solution, uh, but it's not a full solution, right? So one, the integration, of course, is important. Two, if it doesn't have OCR capability, it kind of negates it as an imaging solution altogether. So be aware of, uh, of open source vendors out there that uh, claim that they're cheaper uh, when they don't actually integrate, don't have OCR, and don't have a feature-rich uh, uh, application. That's what we run into the most. Carl, any, any other comments yeah, on that, other, Greg? The other thing, Bradley, is that we've shown you using web center imaging, web center, web center, the web center imaging suite, which is to capture the forms recognition and the imaging. We've shown you how that can be used for processing invoices. Many clients, uh, and, and, and this is very true with, with Oracle clients, have many business processes that have lots and lots of paper that they would like to eliminate the paper processing. And so the, the web center solution back, if I may, I don't know if I can get there fast. Can't get there fast. Um, Judge showed this slide. Please bear with me for two more seconds. I didn't overclick. The Web Center suite, we've shown you only imaging and process management being used for invoice processing. If you have an Oracle client that has many, many business requirements for, uh, for, for getting rid of paper, you can use imaging and process management for some of those applications. Uh, there's the what, what's called the managed attachments feature, which will let you connect, it, it, attach images to HR transactions, attach images to AR transactions, attach images to uh, a journal entry transactions. It, uh, you, you also have the ability to branch out and use what used to be called the universal content management software, which has some additional features that you can use, uh, desktop integration where, where you actually, from right from Word, you can save documents into the Web Center content solution. Um, you can incorporate the records management solution for both paper records and digital records uh, to automate the client's uh, retention plan. So the, the advantage of the Web Center imaging solution is you can start with invoice processing, but without having independent systems, you can extend the core uh, solution to address many other business solutions. And then, of course, there's always this Web Center portal and site stuff that is incorporated with this as well. So the client can, ex can expand. The, the point solutions you're talking about may be okay for a specific departmental application, but they're not enterprise-wide, and they don't allow a client to grow and, and have a a fully integrated solution across all business business units and business functions. Thanks, Carl. Brad, did that answer your question? Yeah, it did. It did. I think one other thing to uh, inject there is that the reusable workflow accelerators um, that are configurable, it goes back to your thought process of reusing, because you think about all the business processes that are out there, a lot of the workflows are similar and they're reusable and configurable to fit many, many business processes. And you're not going to get that with any other vendor because they're going to have to custom develop and everything is going to be custom built to fit with versus something that is already built together. Yep. 
that that's true. I, I forgot to mention the whole people BPN thing is something that can go across all of these web center content as well as non web center uh, applications. All good points. Uh, any additional questions out there? Yes, this is more like a um, best practice thing. Um, my name is Tolu. Um, I'm from FISA with System Integrations. I was wondering if I need, uh, are the clients who are prepared the same documents that need to be converted into electronic format, will the best practice be using ODC or can IPM handle this on its own? Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure I totally understand the question, but, but Oracle Document Capture or, or Web Center Capture is a, a product that allows you to import, uh, automate the import of documents from emails, faxes, and for low and high volume scanning. One of the things we didn't show you is Oracle Distributed Document Capture, which is a desktop scanning application. But in addition to IPM, the, the Web Center Imaging Repository, storing away images that are captured by Web Center Capture or Web Center Distributed Capture, you can also upload any native file, pretty much any native file from your desktop, or the system can be configured to import uh, native files from external sources. If you got emails that had uh, native file attachments like an Excel file, those Excel files can be, uh, the system can be configured uh, with a little bit of tweaking to Im automatically import those native Excel files, store them away in this Web Center Content Imaging and Process Management uh, repository. They can then be displayed in that viewer that I was uh, showing you. Uh, they, they can be displayed in this viewer. They'll be rendered, or you can go in and you can see where it says launch native viewer. I can launch the native viewer if I've opened a, uh, an Excel file, and I could literally now use the Excel file in, um, in Excel. If you then the solution to include the Web Center content document management piece with the desktop integration. You can also get all the versioning and, 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 and that kind of stuff with it. Did, did that address your question? Somewhat. Oh, okay. Oh. Right now, we're actually using ODC for this capture. Pretty much, they had they had physical documents and that's to be converted into electronic format. I was wondering if IPN could actually um, negate the use of ODC itself. No, the answer is no. No, you still need the ODC client for conversion of physical documents to electronic. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Um, any, anybody? Okay, great. Who is this? Uh, this is Kevin Hall with Oracle. Unfortunately, my invite was for 3 o'clock Central Time, not 3 o'clock Eastern Time, and I got right at the very tail end of this. Um, do you have, uh, did you record this so I can take a look at it later on my own, or how do I look about learning what you guys do? Yeah, so we are currently recording it. Um, and all we have to do is throw bookends on it, make it look a little nicer as far as sound quality and video quality, and we'll be sending this out to registrants. Um, I wrote your name down, Kevin, so I'll just, it's just kevin.hall at oracle.com, right? Uh, Kevin.e.hall at oracle, H-A-L-L. -L. So what I'll do, once I get this packaged up, I'll send it to you. And then um, if, if, you, if you don't get it within a week or so, just let me know, and I, I have other channels that you can view it on. Okay. Appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, great. So we're still available at any point in time offline.
and uh, we encourage you to reach out uh, via email through the website. We've got forms you can ask questions. Uh, we're attentive on our social networks. Um, I personally would route any questions you had on any social network to the appropriate person so they could reach out and answer your questions. Um, we'll have this recording um, distributed here in the next week or two weeks after we can get some uh, nice quality put on it. Uh, ultimately, uh, we, we sincerely appreciate the time you spent. We know how valuable your guys' time is. We just hope that you guys saw something today that you know sparks some kind of roadmap and provides value for you. So if there's anything we can do to help moving forward, um, let us know. I want to thank uh, Carl Dion, Greg Moeller, Judd Robbins, and um, look forward to hearing and speaking to you guys soon. So uh, have a great day, and uh, good luck. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Bye.